Hi, my name is Shannon and this is my inaugural video for photography. I would like to spend the next year or so making videos going over the things that I don't do well in photography. Uh, I've been taking pictures for a long time, but I haven't really taken pictures as good as I would like to take. And as a result, uh, I would like to, I want to figure out how to do better. And since I know that there are people out there who uh, feel the same way, that must feel the same way, I want to do that with you guys online. So I will experiment, I will find a problem every week and I will try to find a solution to that problem and uh, I'll post it all together at the same time. The question and the answer. So uh, that's my goal for today. By the way, I am filming in a freezing cold room. So if my nose is red or you hear me sniffle because it's so cold, forgive me, please. Uh, but it was the only room I could find that was empty and uh, that I could film in today. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I would like to talk about is manual focus photography. I've been taking pictures for a long time, ever since uh, high school photography class, where I was shooting with a manual camera, manual lens, and uh, black and white photography. And I've been doing manual focus on and off uh, ever since then. But once I got autofocus lenses, I use those more and more often, but uh, I've never stopped using manual lenses. However, I don't use them as well as I would like to use them. And uh, what I would like to try to do with you guys is find out some techniques for better manual focusing because I never get photos as good as I like them to be. For example, this. We're going to be using this lens wide open today for all the shots. Yes, if I want to make the aperture smaller like this, then I can certainly get everything in focus. That's not really the challenge. The challenge is having everything in focus when the lens is like this, wide open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside today and take some photos, and I'm going to try a few different things. Uh, the first of which is going to be using uh, one of the features in my camera, which I'm filming with right now, so I can't really show you. But the feature is called focus peaking. And focus peaking uh, is some system, I don't know, it's magic inside the camera that lets little pixels light up wherever the focus is supposed to be. And as you manually move the focus ring uh, through the picture, you can see the areas that are in focus and that are out of focus uh, using this tool. And I want to test it to see if it will assist me in making more photos sharp. Uh, the second thing we will try is just a faster shutter speed. Uh, this should get rid of all of the uh, motion blur that's associated with out of focus photos. I guess I should mention now, there are a couple of things that make focusing hard when you're doing manual focus. Uh, one is you shaking the camera. And that's hard to deal with. Cameras with stabilization do this better, but um, I don't have one of those. On the other hand, there is motion that comes from people moving in the scene, and that is something that I can do about, maybe, with a faster shutter speed. Trick number three will be breathing. Now, breathing is something we all do all the time. Well, not when you're drinking. The way you breathe as you press the trigger can make a difference. You can move the camera around just a little bit as you press the shutter and I want to avoid that if possible. I'm going to breathe as though I were shooting a rifle. I'm going to breathe out slowly 
And then right towards the end of the breath, I'm going to pull the trigger. Hopefully that will allow me to get a smoother shot. Another thing I'm going to try today is taking more photos. Law of odds says that the more photos you take, the more chance you have of getting a good shot. And so I think I will go out and try to take a whole bunch of shots of one thing and see what I come up with. Another thing I'm going to try is zooming into the image. If I zoom into the image digitally uh, using the camera's feature, it should help me get closer to the subject and I can see whether or not my image is in focus. I don't know whether or not the digital screen will be sharp enough for me to get a good shot, but we will give it a try and see. Two things that I will not be trying today are a timer and a tripod. Timers are not super convenient for shooting photos when you're out, unless you're on a tripod. If you're on a tripod, you can take pictures uh, remotely even and not touch the camera at all. But if you're walking around and doing street photography or you're walking around on your lunch hour taking photos, which is a lot of what I do these days, uh, you don't really want to bring your tripod out with you. And the timer doesn't seem to make much of a difference uh, when you're doing it handheld. If you're taking pictures of stars uh, or you're taking pictures of landscapes in the morning or in the evening, uh, a timer and a tripod seem super valuable but I will not be using them today because they're not particularly practical for the kind of photography that I normally find myself doing. Okay, that's that. Those are the four, five, five, six, five things I guess we're gonna try out today. Let's go out and see how they work. Let's take a look now at the photos I took during lunch, starting with the peaking shots. This doesn't look terribly in focus. That doesn't either. I tried to focus on this one at this spot and the letters are legible, but everything seems a little bit blurry. On this particular image, everything seems to be blurry. The background looks nice, but it's supposed to be blurry. Uh, the same goes for this one. And this is using only peaking. I tried to focus on this part right here. And it's not terribly bad, but you get a little bit of blurriness around everything. Now that one's not so bad. That's not too bad. Oh, here's another peaking one. I feel that I could have gotten this one sharper, looking at it now, if I had been able to zoom in. But for only peaking, it's not terrible. All right, now we're switching over to zoom. And this is where I just try to zoom in. And I tried to zoom in to this location here. That's not too bad. How about this one? This one looks pretty good. This is not bad. Zooming in. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> it's not very sharp. This is the part that I focused on, and it's not very sharp. I took a second shot. It's about the same, but it's a pretty picture. Okay, now this is a moving target using just the zoom, so I don't have high hopes for this one. Having said that, the characters on the screen, the Chinese characters look okay, and the Korean characters look okay. And to be honest, the little old lady looks all right too. Well, not bad. All right, let's take a look now at the multiple shots. On all of them, I tried to focus on this mirror, and you can even see me right there, which is great. But let's see if the focus looks good. This focus looks all right. This looks on, this one looks okay. This looks okay. This one looks a little better. This one looks a little worse. Actually, they all look pretty close, don't they? Huh. 
Okay, let's take a look at this temple now. The full image looks like this. And it looks pretty sharp until you go in closely. Then we can see here the Chinese characters are not terribly sharp. They don't look bad, uh, especially considering that they're not very large in the picture itself, but not terribly sharp since this was actually what I was focusing on. That one's worse, 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 really bad, still bad, 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 bad. Outside the first shot that I took, none of these look particularly good. Uh, in this next shot, which is this, again, I tried to focus on the very center, which would be right about here. And you don't see a whole lot of sharpness anywhere, do you? And this looks really blurry. I think it's fair to say that the farther away you are from an image, the more likely you are to have focus problems. Let's move on to breathing. This is where I breathed out during the shot and took the shots toward the end of the breath. And as you can see, the results seem all right. I don't know how much we can attribute to the breathing, but it didn't hurt to do it this way. I will say, however, when you try to take multiple shots, uh, the breathing does not help because you're breathing out and then you start to breathe back in during the shots. And so you end up having a problem with that. These don't look bad, but they don't look all that great either. The next ones, I tried to breathe out during these shots, but this was a moving truck and I wasn't really sure I was able to get the focus at all on it, but let's see. That's actually not bad considering it was moving and I'm at 1.7 and it's far away. Okay, still breathing. Not bad. Now, this is where I did a little bit of everything together. I did the peaking, I did the zooming, I did um, the higher shutter uh, speed. By the way, all the shutter speeds on this were fast because the, the day was bright and I couldn't get a decent shot. Everything would be too bright if I left the aperture at 1.7 and let all of the light in and had the shutter speed slow. So the shutter speed on all of these is really fast. And you can look down here in the corner and you can see, oops, you can see one four thousandth of a second. And it's still a pretty bright picture. But when we look at it, let's see. Naturally, I focused on this spot, kind of far away. Not bad. Perhaps it was the wrong target because it's all white. Uh, but they don't look to be very in focus. Especially after that first shot. Uh, the next set is also a combination. And I tried to make focused this area, which doesn't look focused, really. It's not bad. But again, can you see the purple halo around the grass and the bush? That's not supposed to be there. These don't look bad, but they don't look very sharp either. Uh, and then another set of combined. There's a lot of detail in this bush. So we should be able to see if it's in focus or not. It's not bad. Though, what I want to do is to make my photos look like all the photos you see on the internet. Amazing and beautiful and perfect. These images are not those. So if I'm going to rely on multiple images, look at all those images. All right, you know what? I guess I should keep going since the whole point 
was to see if one in a hundred makes a difference. I don't know guys, what do you think? Do they look any different? They almost all look the same, right? Hmm. From what I can tell, peeking seems to be effective. Peeking helped me to get in-focus shots. And I wasn't even zooming in. When I zoomed in, I got in-focus shots as well. I think if I were to combine peeking with zooming, I would have a pretty good combination for making shots look nice, look sharp. Breathing, uh, I'm a little bit more on the fence about. Uh, breathing, I think, would help with the camera not moving while you're pressing the shutter, but I had such high shutter speeds that it didn't really make a difference, I think. So, because it was such a bright day, I was shooting at one four thousandth of a second. So, it wasn't really helpful to have me breathe in a specific way. Not that I could tell. So, I might have to test that under different circumstances to see how that would uh, affect the image. Uh, and then the idea of taking multiple shots, uh, it didn't seem to help me the way I was doing it. It seemed that the first shot came out well, and then the ones after that didn't. Perhaps if the shot were moving more, and I were changing focus as the object was moving, that would make a difference. But as it turned out, it didn't seem to make much of a difference to me in shooting yesterday. So, there we go. That's that. Anyway, uh, for the like and the subscribe thing, I didn't get the likes idea when I was a viewer watching it, but now that I've made this first video, I think I get it a little bit more. It's kind of like a, a way of encouraging people, uh, those people who are making a video like I am and uh, don't know uh, how they're doing or how they did. And uh, a little bit of encouragement I think would be fantastic. So if you want to encourage me, uh, if you did actually like the video, please like it. And I guess the same holds for the subscribe button. Uh, if you want to join me on this journey or you just want to see how I do, uh, whether I get better at making these videos or I get better at photography, uh, then hit the subscribe button as well. And I would really appreciate it uh, if you did. And otherwise, uh, have a great day. Oh, this room is so cold. This is so stupid. Let's go out and give it a shot. Let's try that again.